threat round two. All right, Mark, welcome back. And those of you that are just joining us, uh, just so you know, Mark was also on our podcast last week. We were talking about too many great things, so we decided to uh, make it a, a two-part episode. So if you did not catch that first one, please make sure you go back and check that out on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or Spotify, of course, if you're listening to that audio. Again, hello all. Welcome to the Fantasy and Sci-Fi Fanatics Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Kubal. And again, we have Mark with us again, part two. Uh, Mark, if you could, I'd love to talk about the blood of the spear now. Uh, I'm really, really interested uh, in particular how you came up with your two characters. And correct me if I'm not saying this right, but is it Kale and Darian? Yeah, um, so I pronounce it in my head Kyle, but Kale Kyle. is completely fine. Um, most of the words or names I make up in the um, book uh, pretty much phonetically, you can pronounce them phonetically. So oh, the way cool. that that's, spelled, that's how that's how you pronounce them. Oh, cool. um, but for this particular one, I pronounce pronounce Kale or Kyle in my head. Um, I've been world building this particular world for many many years. Um, I love world building. It's one of my favorite things ever. I love. Um, I do. I've never actually played D and D, but I love campaign settings. I love reading about the details of worlds and stuff like that. So um, that's always been one of the things that I'm really, really into. It sounds to me and... like we need to get you in on a game there, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. Um, so I'd been world building forever. I knew I wanted to be a writer from a very young age. Um, I didn't know anything about it or what it entailed. Well, obviously, I knew that you had to write a story, um, but the actual way to write a story and to develop and structure a novel, stuff like that took me a long time to learn. But I didn't have, I had my world, but I didn't have a story. And I was flipping through um, art online um, through Larry Elmore, uh, his, mm. his um, online gallery. Yeah, yeah. And I became across a image of a fight between two men. One that was dressed like a warrior on a knight. He had like chain mail on and um, a great big sword. And the other was in robes, it was, had a shamanic headdress and a staff. And they were kind of like at cross purposes, they had the staff and the sword. There were obviously a battle going on. And I was like, oh, this is a really cool image. Like some of some of his artwork, I don't like the, the images of the characters that he portrays. I'm just like, oh, no, it doesn't work for me. Um, but these two looked fantastic. And I started wondering, who are they? Why are they here? What's the fight about? What, what led to this point? And I started creating a story in my head about them. And from that seed, the <laughs> this is giving away spoilers, maybe, um, developed an idea for two half brothers uh, who were fundamentally different. One's a warrior, one's a magic user. And there, and the struggle, battle between the two of them. And that became Kyle and Darian. And um yeah the story for the for the blood of the spear the eye of eternity and the setting the stuff i had um as backstory for the world um had their lead characters to to, to run that story forward from that so that's basically where it all started <laughs> showing my um wizards of the coast roots i was gonna say and just speak speaking of dragon lands from our last you know uh, <laughs> conversation i i personally I, uh, i forget who the author was but with the you know cameron and raceland the, the Margaret Ra and tracy Hickman. Oh, yeah, yeah so the yeah 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 so the these brother, were my formative years brother and brothers in arms i think is what it was it's yeah like cool Oh okay, my gosh, right. that had to be one of the best books I've ever read in my entire life. And I think it's when they basically are... I don't think I read that one. Oh, I, you have to go read it like tomorrow, yeah. okay, or today, okay. your time, right? Like go, go, go get it yeah. used and just get it or find it from the library. It is, mm -hmm. it's honestly one of my favorite books of all time. And it's very, you know, it's, it's, I feel like it does a great job really with their relationship and, you know, it really shows the differences between them, but also shows mm -hmm. that, you know, at that core heart, they're still brothers kind of thing. And the rest of the uh, like people that are around them, like, uh, I think it's the one where they joined the mercenary company and they right. basically have to like, I can't forget if it was, yeah, they have to like break into this, uh, this keep. And it, I don't want to give anything away, but I have to say it was like the cover is one of my favorites because 
and that's what really reminded me like, of your cover. Uh, and then when I read the description for your two characters, it's like they're literally like standing back to back, and you know, Raceland's in his, you know, his. Oh uh, yeah, that that staff that and, actually that image, yeah, that rings a bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. yeah so it's really good. look, I I can't deny it. They've been big influences on me as well. But you know, they were twins. These guys are half brothers. So you know, yeah. there's the difference. But I still um, like it though because you you took yeah, you know yeah. the the you know. Like we always talk about that, right? We just talked about in the last uh, you know, part one of this interview, and yeah. you took something that you know were from your roots, but you turned it around and made it very interesting. Uh, like to me, at least, like I, I like yeah. that. It's it's a similar trope, I feel like, but you turned it on its head because there, yeah. you know, I I just I like how you how you did that. I it, you can still see the roots, but it's it's new and different. Uh, yeah, at least from from my perspective. So I I yeah. really liked it when i read it from your description and from uh, a couple things that you had said on twitter so i was like oh yeah and i was like even more on board because <laughs> uh, you know it's again in that, i'm waiting in that familiar you know those waters that territory but yet it's refreshing because it's new and you know and it's engaging so i, cool. I was really interested in that awesome makes people pick up the book that's even better <laughs> amen to that uh for our second one i was really interested in what a demon hunter is and who in particular the bronze guard are sure so demon hunters are a order uh, a military order um they're an elite fighters um their official name is castarian they are castarian it's a uh, one of the old the old tongue or higher Syric is the old tongue in my world and uh, um they are so basically the the premise of this world um and i think this is actually going to jump into some of your other questions as well but it all kind of relates so um this world about three thousand years prior to the start of this story there was a race of humans who were known as summoners and they were able to summon elemental beings from uh, different dimensions and that gave them an enormous amount of power and with that power they built this utopia like civilization uh, on on the world sobia um, a group of those summoners um, at the height of their of the civilization's power or prestige decided that they um will look wanted to look for a, for a way to find immortality and they opened a gateway to the void and in the void they fell prey to the temptations of a dark goddess mm. the demon queen and they began summoning demons instead of the elementals the um empyrean so the um, demons, the demons started coming forward. Um, they were basically these these um, fallen um, summoners. Uh, the summoners were also Saren. They're called Saren, and these guys who fell were the Divac Saren. And so it's almost like you know, there's the light side of the Force and the dark side of the yeah, Force. Yeah, so yeah. the Jedi and Sith. Um, and when the there basically became, became a civil war between the summoners and, and the dark summoners and the climax of that war saw the destruction of the the of the civilization um the continent that the story is set on athme basically split into um the middle section of it sank and the waves of the ocean filled it um so created an eastern half and, and a um the the what do i call it the um eastern realm, realms and the the western realms and the eastern half um and from that time um so the summoners are basically um executed <laughs> Okay. Anybody who who is born with the mark of the summoner, which is a um, a symbol that appears like a tattoo on the back of their hand, but it's oh, like a holographic cool. tattoo. It, it's actually three dimensional. It's above the hand. Um, if they're born, ch children born with that are some of them summarily executed before they can start summoning and possibly summon demons, um, because lots of prophecies came out at the end of the um of the war that the demons weren't gone the demon queen you know hadn't forgotten this particular reality she still wanted to get her hands on it demons would come again and they would forever hunt 
people who had the ability to summon to possess them um, and open the, try and open this massive gateway for this dark queen to come through, uh, dark goddess to come through. So summoners, anybody who's born with the mark of a summoner is executed. Anyone on whom it appears later in life, because you're not always born with it, it can develop over time. Oh, cool. uh, anyone who finds it, who, who develops it, is then executed as well. They want to, everyone wants to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, so there's this actually this big tradition across the civilization when you greet someone that you've got to show your hand. Oh, that's cool. To show that there's actually nothing on it. Oh, that's, that's um, cool. Speaking so of world building. <laughs> yeah, right. Something simple uh, so, but really unique. Yeah. So there's that like gloves and things like that have like a flap that you can oh, do cool. and show the back that's of it. Cool. Um so th the Castirian, the demon hunters, actually uh come from that war. And they are still around. They're not a particularly large order these days because demons are so rare. But um, there is a particular um, place on the continent called Dalmir or the Deadlands, where their reality is um, weak. Uh, the the veil between dimensions is really weak there because that was where the the final climax of the war took place mm. that caused the sundering. And demons smaller demons can push their way through these um these thin the thinning of the veil there um they work their way out of the deadlands and the demon hunters basically hunt them down and kill them before they can get oh, to cool. any of the other realms kyle and darian uh live in the borderlands which is the stretch of land between the realm of aldania and dalmir the deadlands and that's basically where the the demon hunters uh keep, uh, have their base and that's something that Kyle always wanted to do. Although there are three citadels, which are leftovers from that war as well. The three citadels are where these refugees um, have built themselves a home that is separate to the laws um, of the clans that rule the other realms. Um, and they're kind of independent living on these, these outskirts. Um, and Kyle and Darian live there and Kyle wants to, to join the demon hunters. That's what he's always trained for. Um, and without going into spoilers, there's not, um, there aren't many demon hunters around for a specific reason. Okay. Um, and of all the applicants have to be whittled down to one mm. who basically becomes an apprentice to a, um, a demon hunter proper. Um, spoiler alert but it's the first chapter stuff and it is talked about in the in the blur but kyle fails his test mm -hmm. for reasons um and he has to go back to the drawing board as to what he's going to do um and at this time one of the um princes of aldania is on the borderlands as uh in a role of a provincial governor and he has um, hired a mercenary company called the Bronze Guard to act as his guard while he's uh, touring the uh, Three Citadels. Um, and Kyle has had some interaction with the, um, the soldiers in the mercenary company and having failed to complete his trials, but having had the training to that point of a demon hunter, these are elite um, warriors, uh he's considered a viable candidate to yeah. join them and so they offer to sponsor him into um into the bronze guard so. I, I don't know if we have to ask you any more questions tim i think everybody should just go out and buy the book right now and if you don't you're very silly uh <laughs> again i i just want to stress to people that as soon as i had read the description between that and, you know, talking to Mark and looking at Felix's art, I was like, so <laughs> like when's book two coming out? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and well, here's the thing is like, so I, you know, I had, um, you know, I had talked to certain people and um, so like I'm reading, um, I, if you like uh, grim dark fantasy, uh, I'm going to have uh, in the future is uh, Christopher uh, Redding and um, he's got the Hellborn King. So I'm almost done with that. It has been really hard for me. I feel really bad because his is such a good book. It's yeah. got to be that and um, Robert J. Hayes' Never Die were two of the best books I've read in the last 10 years. I yeah. struggle on my phone. I struggle and I have it on my phone. And I was trying okay. to go to, actually, I was trying to go meet Chris 
at one of his shows in Wisconsin to get the physical book. And I guarantee you, if I'd had the physical book, I would have been done a month ago, but I keep having to set it down. I think I need to get an actual Kindle instead of reading on my phone. Yeah. Uh, but I got him. I'm almost done with the book is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm reading Clayton's uh, River of Thieves, uh, which is absolutely incredible. And then uh, I'm about to be on uh, Scott Odin's uh, A Gathering of Ravens, uh, which is, if you haven't seen that description, it sounds just an amazing. Yeah, I've got it. I haven't yeah, read it yet. I've got yeah, it. Though, so, yeah. Yeah. So you're my fourth right now. So as okay. soon as I can All right. finish those two this week and then get to uh, get to uh, Scott's and pay justice, uh, I'll be on yours. So I'm like, man, I'm like, I've been been on a roll lately you know and I, <laughs> i'm like you know and i was talking to uh benjamin another uh he's a, a another guy in twitter i've talked to who's a booktuber and um has his podcast and youtube channel and yeah. he does a lot of reviews he's like man he's like he's like you pick some good books i'm like i'm trying you know <laughs> like uh but yeah like i'm really excited to uh to get to yours here i'm hoping in the awesome. next couple of weeks i was hoping to already be there but i i think in the future I'm like that's, that's okay. i'm getting your book on you know, print. Yeah, yeah. I I'll fly through a print book. This, and I think of my friend. He made a good point. He's like, you never have read on Kindle, um. So it's like one of those things. I just did yeah. want to say one thing to plug my friend, uh, C. L. Snyder, and I'm just totally blanking right now, uh. But it it's just so interesting to me that you and her both have some very interesting, um, correlations, uh, with your type of fantasy. Um, and I was, she was another one where actually I'm meeting her, um, near us in here in New York to actually get her books physically, yeah. uh, cause I'm struggling, uh, to read them. And it's, it's sad cause I'm not doing, yeah. I'm not doing the books justice on, yeah. you know, on my Kindle. Uh, but I was reading one of hers recently, um, again, and it's just interesting because I'm going to blank on this character, um, but her main character, uh, it's the Crown of Stone series. Um, and the book one is called Magic Price. And uh, she has a, uh, a character that's very similar um, to, I feel like, uh, from Kyle. Um, and it's just interesting to me to see two different writers have, you know, very similar character descriptions uh, with such unique characters. And there's yeah. a lot of differences and things like that. But in terms of how... Um, how you guys have described those characters and from what I've read of her so far, it just seems like, again, that's my cup of tea. Cause I really mm -hmm. liked, um, you know, like um, Geralt from the Witcher and she did a great yeah. job of taking that and then turning it into something else. And my sure. buddy and I were like, man, like, you know, and we were talking about your book and I'm like, you know, here's another just like elite warrior who's, you know, putting it, really hard situation and has to make yeah. decisions and, you know, is tempted by the dark side, so to speak, I feel like, and, yeah. you know, and has to choose what to do in that, you know, really affects everybody else. And I, yeah. I realized like, I'm really drawn to those type of characters. I think because I'm such a huge Luke Skywalker fan and yeah. just star Wars just in general. And I, have, I, I yeah. like, yeah, I like a lot of those same, um, you know, tropes or, you know, characters yeah. and, it's, it's again I think, it's a comfort blanket for me yeah absolutely i mean i can easily say that yeah Car uh caraman and russell Magier were like uh pivotal for me in a template for these characters but in some ways you could look at them and go oh well that's thor and loki yeah you know? yeah, yeah no right yeah. so the same the same thing and it's like yeah totally it's <laughs> like I, I i i get that i can see where it is so i guess there's you know uh probably a I'm sure somewhere somebody's talked about the trope, but it's something that, you know, we've, we've tapped into and, you know, that's, it's a trope or a, an archetype that is coming forward in our writing for sure. So um, then uh, what's your next question is about Darian. <laughs> Who is yeah. Darian? It's just what funny to me because you just, you just blew my mind. I never even made that correlation. I'm sure, you know, our listeners have it either between, you know, Thor and Loki and Cameron and yeah. Nathan. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, I, I need to kind of pick my brain and put it. Yeah, down okay. <laughs> like well, I, that was actually one of the things that I was talking to Felix about when I was talking about the brothers. I was like, because Kyle is, they'd have both have different fathers, had the same mother. Um, and Kyle is, you know, tall, blonde hair, blue eyed. And um, Darian is uh, a bit shorter, slender, dark hair, green eyed, and um, is studious and obviously uh, has the talent to uh, 
so in my world there isn't magic as such um there is the light of the eye the light of the eye of eternity which is uh the force creates the essence of creation and people who have the ability to perceive that light in their mind in their mind's eye are able to if they're trained to wield it um form it into runes of uh creation uh which is a sigh so the light is called a sigh technically the runes or the language of creation is a syric and then the language of the summoners or the siren was higher syric it was based on that and um so darian has the ability to perceive a sigh of the light of the eye um and has had some training as a witch which is different to a seralis seralis were the <sighs> almost uh, kind of like understudies or administrators for the siren for the summoners okay. they could perceive the light of the eye they could see and will decide but they could not summon they didn't have the mark of the summoner they weren't able to connect to these beings the empyreans that lived within the light of the eye and were and weren't able to summon them um into this dimension or inhabit their their kind of like almost like a um a symbiotic relationship um so they could wield uh, and use the language of creation but they weren't able to see it naturally which the summoners could could mm. do so they've learned from books that the summoners have written um so their power is limited to a degree and it is broken up into into elements so there's fire water earth air and spirit um or soul and um darian has the ability to perceive the uh light of the eye and he's decided that um he wants to pursue training as a seralis he was apprentice to the keeper of the citadel that he was in and a keeper is a witch they don't you they they wield the light of the eye but they uh kind of use it in a less powerful way than Seralis or the summoners did they don't utilize it with the runes of the language of creation they kind of like um imprint their wants or desires on it and it kind of like takes shape or form um but if you can actually get in and change the pro the base programming of everything around you um which is what the language of creation tends to do with the with with the, the light of the eye behind it um and when the prince of aldania prince alessander comes to the citadels he has an advisor who is a seralis mm. and this uh, seralis uh sees the talent in darian and basically takes him under his wing uh offers him an informal apprenticeship and when alessander is uh leaving to return to the capital to go with, um, his teacher um and apply for um admission into the uh, palace of the eye in asolia which is the um city state of the seralis mm. in the north in the north um and kyle coming back um from having failed his trials as a um to become a cassirian or a demon hunter is kind of like you can't do that you know magic using is is evil that's that's how the world was destroyed last time um he doesn't want darian to go and darian's like i'm going regardless of what you say yeah. um they move along the story moves along a bit and um they're being on the borderlands with demons that come out of the deadlands yeah. um there is a, a battle against the demon um and it's revealed in that battle that Kyle and Darian have the bloodline of an ancient uh, an ancient summoner summoner's mm. bloodline they pick up what is a what looks like a well Kyle picks up an old spear um and it turns into the bronze spear which is a relic or an artifact of the summoners and is one of the the prophecy hallmarks to say hey it when this comes back the summoners are going to return and so is the demon queen and um that's kind of like a big spotlight on them as having the bloodline of this um of the last emperor which is the name of um anyone who is powerful enough to um 
bind is the best way to describe it, uh, the most powerful elemental. And they basically become the emperors of the summoners and uh, the like the leader. Oh, wow. So um, yeah, it's just it's um, determined that they have their blood had the bloodline of the summoner. They are the literally the blood of the spear. And, oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, and that's the turning point for their story. Um, and then lots of different factions are after them. Some to kill them <laughs> because you know if you kill the um, the harbingers of prophecy, then obviously the prophecy is not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and others because they want the power that they represent to fulfill their own plans and ambitions and stuff like that. Right. Unless you're in a David Eddings book, then it just finds ways. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I know we covered quite a bit there, so that's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm kind of curious for number seven here. So writing a prophecy, really, I always think about doing it. But again, I read David Eddings and, you know, um, you know, Wheel of Time yeah. and things like that. And mm -hmm. how, and I know yours says, you know, in the description that there's a prophecy. I guess I'm curious at like how you structured it and how you just wrote it, basically. Because I always go to do it and I'm like, I've never done it before. And I don't I've never done it before either. <laughs> and it's like trying to plot. I hate plotting. I absolutely hate it. I see whenever I put plots down on, on paper, I feel like they're just stupid, dumb ideas. It sounds awful. I, it's like, it doesn't inspire me. And I was like, oh, yeah. you know, Robert, Robert Jordan is like one of my all time favorites. So like I started with Wieson Hickman and then I got to Wheel of Time mm -hmm. and it was like mind blown. This is like, literally the type of stuff I want to write. This mm -hmm. is the scope I want to do it in. This is where I want to live in these types of stories. Yeah. And yeah, he blew me away with the stuff that he did. And he's, oh, that um, first 50 pages. Planning. Well, yeah, that yeah. first 50 pages. But just like yeah. his prophecy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, yeah. it's basically like scripture. Yeah. Those right? first two books um, were two of the best I've ever read because yeah. of that. Like I, you know, you're, yeah, like I think I'm on book, about to be on book six actually. And yeah, I just I went back over books, all of them actually. Um, yeah, on Audible, and I just was even. Oh, they're fantastic! Oh, oh they're I fantastic. love them. They're fantastic. Kate Redding could read me the phone book. <laughs> like literally, love her so I much. Totally agree. Um, yeah, like, so her Moraine was incredible. I just yeah. I think it's going to be ruined for me now. Like you yeah. know, on yeah, on the, it's the not TV the same. Show, but yeah, but yeah, she was fantastic. I yeah. actually, I tell my buddy because we're actually going to um. We're gonna we're getting done with Malazan Book of the Fallen. We're on yeah. halfway through Reaper's Gale, so book seven. And after okay. that, he's like, I want to read Wheel of Time. I'm like, I'm down. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm down too. I'll read it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, I'll get you in there. Yeah, we'll, we'll book it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, Sounds oh, man, good. I, yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be really yeah. I, I said to him, I was like, well, when I haven't read the first, you know, four in probably seven years, you know. So I feel like it's gonna be yeah you know, brand new again, and it'll be my third time, you know, going through the story. And yeah, it's, yeah, I definitely yeah, I've, there. Those are, those I've are read them multiple times. So it won't be, <laughs> it will be like my 10th or 12th time. But yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Um, so when I came to prophecy, so I definitely looked at what Jordan did. And I looked at what he wrote in the, you know, he like bookend a lot, a lot of the, the novels with something at the beginning and something at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also play a lot of World of Warcraft, so oh, cool. um, I have been for years. And in the, the expansion Legion, there was um, a, a prophecies that kept coming from an old god that were really bizarre and, like, on the surface, don't make much sense, but they're kind of intriguing. And there's a lot of symbolism in them, and what could it possibly mean? And there are, like lots of forum threads with people trying to decipher them and stuff still and some are being deciphered as expansions come out and like oh my god that's what was meant with this and stuff like oh, that cool. so i saw that and i was like all right well plotting i know the beginning of my story i know the middle parts and i know the end there are parts in between that i'm still discovering as i go mm -hmm. but i know where kyle and darian are both going i know what happens at the end and how it's going to be resolved and I know other parts that are a little bit deeper beneath the surface of the first plotting that people aren't aware of yet. Um, so I started picking those things apart and moving them into threads of the prophecy. So basically they, they became a bit of a stepping stone of events that are 
too happy. Um, I the paint on symbolisms 